Now listen, this is not for you if you want to be slow and steady and thorough with your decluttering. No, this is for those times when you have a small window of opportunity for decluttering and you want to make the absolute most of it. You want to make it look and feel like you spent hours doing this when in reality, it only took you about 10 minutes. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? It's Laura. Excuse the voice. I am sick. Wish I could declutter this cold, but alas, I can't. Anyway, from this list, you can do one of these. You can do all of these, depending on how much time you have. They're in no particular order, but I will say that if you can pull off the second one, uh, it, it will take you mere seconds but it's going to feel like you have a brand new room. Let's not get ahead of ourselves because one of the biggest time sucks when it comes to decluttering. One of the things that could mean that you would spend hours, hours and hours decluttering and just get rid of like two things is agonizing over decisions. Spending too long deciding what to do with something. Oh, how I've been here. But the trick is to focus on quick decisions. Move on from your maybes. Okay, this is not the time for a maybe pile. This is not the time for stalling and self-doubt and second guessing yourself. No, you just want to be able to make a quick decision and move on. If you don't know what to do with something, just set it aside. Put it away, move on with the things that you can make a quick decision on. And this also extends to uh, afterwards, you know, don't agonize over where you're going to send something, what you're going to do with it after you have decluttered it, or even after you've decided to keep it, like where you're going to put it. Don't be worrying about that. You only have two decisions right now, and that's whether it stays or whether it goes. Those should be your only two piles, but I guarantee when you take this like quick decision approach, you're going to make massive progress. Don't get caught up in the what ifs or the maybes or the just in cases. No, stay or go, that's it. I'm surprised the dog hasn't joined us yet. She's out there on the stairs, she's sulking because I didn't give her a treat after we went for a walk. I normally do, that's our like little routine, but I got distracted. I have since given it to her, but she's out there sulking because it wasn't quick enough. Anyway, the second one, get rid of larger items. I'm talking like pieces of furniture. This is not the time for tiny little things. It's not the time for fiddly things like papers. Listen, you could get rid of a hundred pieces of paper and it would not make the same dent as just getting rid of one or two books. Focus on the bigger things because that's where you're going to get the biggest results in terms of the space that you're saving yourself and the visual effect. A thousand tiny things, you're not really going to notice, but like one big thing, that's going to make an impact. So yeah, those papers, not gonna make the same dent as a book. That book, not gonna make the same dent as, you know, a little coffee table or an armchair or something. And so on, focus on the bigger stuff, the beds, the dressers, the sofas, the uh, like end tables, coffee tables, all that sort of stuff. And again, if you can't make a quick decision on something there, move down to the ever smaller things, but start with the big things. It's funny because in a lot of cases, the decision is kind of the same, whether it's a large item or a small item. It's still, do I want this in my home? Does it spark joy? You know, all of those decisions, it's still a very quick yes or no, but with the bigger things, you're going to free up so much more space. And the more space you free up, the more you're actually going to notice that space. There's nothing more frustrating than spending a long time decluttering something and then it really doesn't make any difference. So, you know, maybe it's in a drawer or maybe it's in a cupboard. It's somewhere that you can't see or maybe the things are so small that even getting rid of a lot of them, visually you can't really see much of a difference. Which actually leads me nicely onto my next point. You want to make sure that you are focusing on visible surfaces. Okay, don't be wasting your time right now for this, <laughs> for the purposes of this like quick decluttering session. Don't be wasting your time on things in a drawer or things in a cupboard or anything behind a closed door. Anything in a closet, anything that is out of the way that you're not seeing or interacting with on a regular basis. It will feel like your efforts are in vain. Now is not the time for the hidden stuff. Now is the time for the stuff that is out, the stuff that you can see. Because listen, your kitchen cupboards could be completely empty. You could have decluttered everything, but there is if there is stuff all over your countertops, 
what difference does empty cupboards really make? Focus on the wins that you can actually see. Focus on the spaces that you're actually in, that you're actually seeing on a regular basis. So it could be a countertop, it could be a dining table. Those tend to accumulate a lot of papers and various bits and bobs like that. But also if there is a space that you see on a regular basis, even if it is behind a closed door, but to you it's visible because you're in that space every day. So maybe like your utensil drawer, maybe your closet, you know, when you're getting dressed in the morning, maybe your sock and underwear drawer. Those things are still visible to you because you're interacting with them on a daily basis. Those are the things to focus on because those are where you're actually going to see the benefit. Those are the places where you're actually going to get the biggest benefit because you're interacting with them on a regular basis and because you're seeing them as soon as you walk into a room. If you want quick results, those are the spaces to focus on. Otherwise, you're gonna feel like all your work was wasted. Now, something else you need to do if you want to 10X the results you're getting. Oh, how I have made this mistake so many times in the past, but I've learned my lesson. It sounds so simple, but trust me on this one. It is to actually remove the stuff from your home. If you have ever decluttered, you know that it usually gets a lot worse before it gets better. You pull things out, you create piles. Then the stuff is sitting everywhere and you may run out of steam. You may run out of time. You may get distracted and the stuff is still sitting there, even if it's nicely separated out into different piles it's still there. If you don't actually do anything with those piles, you may as well not have bothered. Like it probably looks even worse now that you've maybe taken down all the books off the bookcase. Even if they're nicely separated and categorized and you know which ones you want to declutter, if they're just sitting there, you wasted your time. You have to follow through and get rid of the stuff. I used to make this mistake so many times because I would go through the decluttering process, I would make all the decisions and then I'd be tired and I'd just leave the stuff there. I wouldn't dump the rubbish, I wouldn't like put stuff in a donation box, put it out in the car or anything like that. I would just walk away, I would think, ah, job done. No. In fact, I would go so far as to say that if you have stuff sitting around from a previous decluttering session, Focus on that, focus on getting rid of that before you move on and focus on any other area. If you haven't actually got it out of your home, all you've really done is decide to declutter it. And like making this the decision on its own, it's kind of pointless if the stuff still sits there. Plus the big downside that I have found is the longer it sits there, the more likely it is to kind of reintegrate into like the rest of the house. And before I know it, I can't remember which pile was supposed to be decluttered. I can't remem remember which piles were, you know, piles of papers were supposed to be shredded or recycled. And I have to go back through this stuff or it just all gets mixed up and I have to start the process all over again. Such a waste of time, such a waste of energy. Now I make sure that I follow through and I get the job done. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to drive to the charity shop or, you know, go somewhere, but at least have the stuff in a box, in a tub, ready to go in your car so that the next time you're out and about, you can get rid of it. But take it out of your home. Don't leave it sitting there in a pile. If you haven't got rid of it, you haven't really decluttered. All you've done is move stuff from one space to another. Get the results that you deserve by actually getting the job done. Now you might roll your eyes at this next one. You might throw your hands up in despair and think, this does not, this does not apply to me, but hear me out, okay? You need to get help. And I know you're thinking, nobody in my house is on board the decluttering train. Trust me, no one in my house is on board either. But even if they're not into the decluttering itself, I mean, if they are, great. <laughs> but even if they're not, they can help in other ways. They could maybe help you just to move things. That can be a big part of decluttering. It can be very physically intensive. They could also do runs to the charity shop for you. So my husband used to do that for me and it was a really big help, particularly with stuff that was a little bit more sentimental. Like anytime I had brought, you say my daughter's old toys, old clothes to the charity shop, it was like a wrench. 
I really felt it, it was a struggle for me. Whereas if I just put it into the car and then my husband took it away, that was all the better. It really, really helped me to move quickly through the process or certainly more quickly than I would have. So don't discount the uh, many ways that other people can help. Maybe they can look after your kids for you while you're decluttering so that you know, you're not interrupted on a very regular basis. That can really slow down the process. Maybe they can prepare a meal or a snack for you so that you don't have to keep stopping and starting. Something that I actually found really helpful, I did not foresee this at all. <laughs> I did not foresee my husband as being helpful in the decluttering process, but actually, when it came to sentimental stuff, he was, not just in terms of bringing the stuff to the charity shop, which was a big help, but in helping me see things in a little bit more of a logical, rational light. So there are certain things that he just was not as sentimental about as I was. So when we were moving, I was going through all my daughter's, our daughter's <laughs> old clothes and I was really having a hard time letting go. He came in and he just helped me see that there was no point in keeping that stuff. You know, he asked me, why was I keeping it? What was I ever going to do with that? And having that kind of non-sentimental perspective really helped me to let go of a lot more than I would have otherwise. So if you have someone that has a different perspective to you, if you have someone who is kind of unemotional or a little bit more detached from certain things than you are, they can help you to see things from a different point of view. They can help kind of talk you down, really help you see what is important and what really isn't. This could be a family member or could even just be a friend that you bring in to give you a more objective point of view. It could even be a complete stranger. <laughs> so maybe you get like your groceries delivered or maybe you get takeout or something so that you have that little bit more time. You don't have to stop and spend an hour cooking or whatever, which I hate, hate cooking. But there are various other ways that someone else or some service could help you so that you can focus on the job at hand. Even if they don't do the actual decluttering itself, they can still be a big help. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, speed run. You're thinking, let me at it. I am ready. I am ready to make inroads with this clutter. But word of warning, it can help you to have a specific plan beforehand so that you're not just frantically running around your house trying to figure out where to start. Doing that is going to be a huge waste of time. But you don't have to spend ages trying to formulate a plan. No, I have 50 things that you can declutter in five minutes or less. These are things that I have specifically chosen as things that are easy to get rid of and also will make a big impact. I also have a free PDF of all 50 things so that you can just reference it, tick them off as you go. You find all of that in this video right here go get yourself some quick but big decluttering results until then grab me to my hug i'll go back in my shift to glue up slow on <laughs>